Hey, Lee. Hi, Charles. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Oh, I'm, I'm doing great. Let me just uh, set my... Uh, da -da -da. Where is the blur background? Uh -huh. And blur. I was trying this new thing this weekend. It's called uh, Iris because I've got lots of dog barking here in my garden. So not sure if it will work. I've put it on and it's supposed to kind of mute every background noise there is. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll let you know. I love, you know, it's, you know, as an SDR manager, I love, you know, I think one of the challenges of working remote is you, you get less of a, less of an insight into who people are and, and, and their life. And, and so I love when people's dogs and cats and <laughs> kids and fiancés, I, I, I love when they crash Zoom calls, you get to kind of, you know, peek behind and see what, see what people are like. I, lo I love that. So same here. Got Same here. It's, uh, it's an opportunity for a discussion and empathy and uh, but it's just that sometimes well first um, you know like podcast listeners for example they don't all have empathy and some of them are like yeah this dude's not professional um, do I want to keep them maybe maybe not <laughs> <laughs> they can go if they want if they don't have that that empathy but um, yeah I, I find it uh, I, f I also find it pretty cool uh, to for people you know to kind of working in their personal environment, in their day-to-day -day life. And yeah, it can be pretty cool, but right now they're quiet. Uh, they don't have something to bark at, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Love to hear it. Where are you? Where are you based? So I'm located in uh, in uh, the Finger Lakes in New York. I'm uh, about halfway between, like I, I tell people that I'm in Ithaca, New York, about an hour, okay. about an hour and a half south of Toronto. Oh, cool. I'm from yeah. Montreal. Um, so like and i've been quite a, a few times to toronto it's a nice hmm. nice city i'm watching uh one of my favorite uh prime series is is um all or nothing um and i was seeing that you know on your linkedin profile you you saw sales as a team sport and all or nothing is basically you know like this uh this series that follows uh, prominent uh professional teams and right now it's uh, the toronto maple leafs pretty interesting you know to see how how the coach reacts to adversity and how the team works together so it's, it's always uh always my favorite time of the day sitting down eating and watching that series yeah 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 thanks thanks for the recommendation i you know especially being in the streaming tv business i i understandably watch quite a bit of uh, of streaming tv so definitely we'll add that to the list for sure yeah man so Lee, nice to have you here today. Lee is SDR manager at Mountain. Lee, mm -hmm. can you introduce yourself and introduce a, a bit more about Mountain before we jump right in? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, Lee uh, Lee Hamaker. I'm you know one of the SDR managers at, at Mountain. Mountain is a streaming TV platform, um, and we kind of look at streaming TV instead of a awareness based channel, just trying to get as many eyeballs on your ad as possible. We see it as a performance channel to truly drive uh, purchases and app downloads and subscriptions and signups for, you know, for services. So we've had a lot of success um, turning connected TV into a performance channel. We kind of see it as that next channel past search and social. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we recently, uh, we recently actually, um, uh, acquired, uh, Ryan Reynolds's creative company, um, uh, creative agency, maximum effort. And we, you know, we, have, we have a, uh, we have a new, uh, announcement actually just announced this morning where we are rolling out creative as a subscription. So we're, we're working to bring together the data and analytics and audience side of digital advertising with the creative side those sides have typically kind of been separate and we're working to kind of bring them back together. Okay. Pretty interesting. Got a co couple of follow-up questions, but before I do, I was um, researching, you know, your, your LinkedIn profile are impact and mountain related in some sense. Actually they're not. Um, they are, they're, they're very close. And that's one of the reasons I went from, I moved from impact and felt so comfortable moving in, moving into, into mountain was because they both work in the performance marketing space and they both work in the 
in the, okay, performance marketing has been done the same way for so long. We yeah. want to change that kind of space. Uh, I was just curious because both have like million dollar uh, domain names, impact.com, mountain.com. Mm -hmm. And I was like, is this a rich guy like in his 60s, just, you know, starting these companies or, or probably uh, an advisor or an investor just like giving out domain names that he bought in the 80s? Because, I mean, impact.com and mountain.com, these are like million dollar domain names. Yeah, yeah, we, we did have to fight for the uh, for the mountain domain name. <laughs> um, we because at the beginning of, the, of 2021, we were still steel house. Um, and, uh, and, and we changed in, uh, in June or July to, to mountain. And that was quite the effort to get, to get mountain.com. We had to, we had to get that domain from somebody. I don't, I don't have all the details into that process, but I know that was quite the fight. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, then like Ryan Reynolds, uh, I didn't even know that this guy was some kind of entrepreneur. Uh, I've saw it in many movies lately, obviously he's kind of this goofy, uh, character in every yeah. movie he plays. Um, can you tell me a bit more about like his, his business venture that that's super interesting to me? Yeah, it, it, it was really crazy. I'll never forget the moment. I, you know, we kind of had a, had an all hands meeting thrown in our calendar at the last second, which is very, <laughs> which is very typical of fast moving tech companies. It's, Hey, yeah. by the way, stop what you're doing. Everybody in the company zoom, zoom call in 10 minutes. Okay. And, and we get on and, you know, there's our CEO, Mark Douglas, and he says, hey, I want to introduce our new chief creative officer. And all of a sudden, Zoom pops up and there's Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> and I was, standing like, in my kitchen, I was standing in my kitchen making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and I just, I just <laughs> dropped the knife on the ground. I said, is, is that Ryan Reynolds? He works for us. So, so, um, so, yeah. Double so, UTF um, moment. It's big, big moment of just like, I didn't, is, is, right. I was like, is, is this black mirror? What is happening? <laughs> um, and uh, is so, it like deep yeah. fake? Is it like a fake Ryan Reynolds in the zoom? We, we really thought that we really thought this isn't real. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it really became more real the more that we kind of talked about it. We had a lot of sales leadership meetings. How does this, how does this work? How do we handle the inbound volume? You know, what so can did you, we did you speak to him? No, unfortunately not. And I think that's the biggest thing that, you know, when uh, when he came on the Zoom, I think everyone instantly was, oh, yes, like he's going to be on our Slack. I can just shoot him a DM. <laughs> I'm going to meet no. Blake Lively. And that's not really how it works. He, he kind of yeah. has a he kind of has a day job. <laughs> yeah. I mean, being famous and he, he's probably very wealthy. Uh, I don't know his net worth, but he, he probably has his life managed by uh, an assistant or something and probably one one hour dedicated to to mountain per week or something like that but uh, that yeah. that's interesting that's a big move so congrats to you guys um yeah. I, i'm not sure if i want to dive you know in in like your, your past experiences they're very interesting but we we've got like 20 minutes left um so i, I just want to speak a bit more about mountain um mm -hmm. i'm i'm gen z so i i don't use any TVs. Uh, well, I, I'm kind of um, an outlier. I, I travel a lot. I'm a digital nomad and, you know, I, I don't care much about TVs. My parents are boomers. They watch still a lot of TV. Uh, can you dive in a little bit about why you think this is like the, the future of advertising and give us more info and data on, on this market of, of mountains? Yeah. So, so the shift from traditional linear TV towards connected streaming TV mm -hmm. has been, has been happening for several, several years now. And it's, and it's only been getting faster, both in terms of uh, users, uh, uh, viewers transitioning from linear to streaming mm -hmm. and in the ad dollars. Um, interestingly enough, and this is where, this is what makes my job really easy is that the number of viewers transitioning from, you know, cutting the cord and transitioning from linear, you know, to streaming is mm -hmm. far outpacing the ad dollars that are transitioning from linear to streaming. Yeah. So there's a big opportunity. Um, there's a big opportunity in, you know, in, in that space. 
Um, I think the other thing that really makes streaming TV one of the one of the channels of the future, you know, and the big advantage that it has over linear is when you when you advertise on linear, you you have to go through what's what's called an upfront, where you know NBC presents all of the upcoming shows that they have for the year, and you know, and it's it's kind of it's you know it's an efficient process and it works mm -hmm. um but the problem is if, if i'm an advertiser if you know if, if i'm if i'm apple and i want to advertise to you yeah i can't reach you directly i know that you might watch this show and you might watch that show and so instead of picking a show to advertise on with streaming tv you can advertise directly to the person and so, you know, one of the stories that we like to tell is we, we, we onboarded a, a, uh, a golf, uh, a golf advertiser and yeah. they, they asked us, they said, okay, but we really only want to, you know, advertise on, you know, you know, on the golf channel and on the golf mm -hmm. channel st streaming app. Mm -hmm. And we said, you don't want to do that because yes, you are, you're advertising, you're advertising golf themed stuff, but mm -hmm you know, people don't just golf. They also, you know, they also have homes and they watch HGTV. They, ha they eat and they watch Food Network. They, okay. they watch Fox News or CNN and, or they watch, you know, uh, you know, HBO Max. And so you want to meet your audience where they are. Um, mm -hmm. And so that advertiser eventually said, okay, we'll let it happen. And turns out their number one performing network was A&E. And it was not the golf channel. And that just goes to show that, you, you know, the power of streaming allows you to meet people where they are instead mm -hmm. of advertising to the, to the, you know, to the, uh, to the particular show. Yeah. If, if we make it very simple, because again, like I don't, I don't uh, do too much TV. So uh, there, obviously there were some, some Airbnbs that I traveled to that, that have these, these smart TVs. Um, I was advertised on YouTube. Uh, where else can I get advertised on a, a smart TV? Yeah. So YouTube is going to be the, is going to be, that's obviously a very big one. Um, what we do at mountain is, is we only do what's called living room quality advertising. Okay. So, okay. We, so we have private deals set up with various streaming providers, our publishers, and we only advertise to like the big networks, right? You know, for example, um, you know, a, you know, a lot of streaming channels, like for example, Roku, Roku has put my dog to sleep TV. They mm -hmm, have mm -hmm. belly dancer TV. They have all these like extra TV channels yep. and, and we don't really want to advertise to that. We want to advertise on a channel, you know, you know, people, you know, people who are actually watching, if you don't have an actual uh, channel and a program on linear, then we don't want to work with you for streaming. The other thing we do is we only advertise on TVs. We don't add, we don't serve any of our ads on phones or, yeah. on, or on tablets because the idea is, and I'm forgetting the stat off the top of my head, but a large majority of people who are watching streaming TV, they watch with a second device already in their hand. And so, and so the idea, <laughs> the, right, you know, you're watching a show, but you have your phone in your hand too. And yeah. so, and so the, the idea is if you see an ad for, you know, Patagonia, and then you say, oh, that's a really nice hoodie. I want to go look that up. While you're still watching the show, you can just look it up on your phone and make that purchase right there. And in terms of how, in terms of the, the, the full customer funnel, basically what just happened is you served them an ad, they clicked on the ad, and then they made a purchase. And so right. that's, you know, and, and then we report all that right in Google Analytics, right next to people's search and social. So that's kind of how yeah. that works. That was more my, my question because, for example, um, I guess there's an option on YouTube that I, I can check like only on smart TV or something like that. I'm, I'm just wondering what's, what's the platform at, or I mean, there, there could be a platform made by, is it by Roku? Is it a, a platform made by Roku in which like advertisers, they, they go in and then do you select like, is, is there such a platform or like you said, it's private deals? how does it work like my brain still doesn't like necessarily understand how how you program those ads on on smart tv only yeah and 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 th that is all through private deals um okay you know basically so i mean the first thing i'll say is 
is we could we could have a three hour podcast on this. Yeah. <laughs> the digital programmatic advertising space is wildly complicated. And in the five years that I've been in the space, it's even gotten more complicated. Um, okay. You know, despite companies consolidating, it's even gotten more complicated. But basically, you know, in addition to IP addresses, which tell people how you're connected to the internet, um, we, all, we also can pull device IDs, which tells me, okay, is this a, a iPad? Is this a laptop? Is this a phone? Or is this a TV? And so we only choose to place an ad on a device if we know that the device ID is a television. Got it. Maybe we can uh, shift to a bit more SDR stuff. I would uh, love so it. We were, <laughs> we were discussing when we started the call uh, that you see cells as a sport, which is also like a, an, an analogy I often use. It's a team sport. It's not a family as per se, because family, I mean, you know, it's unconditional love. If your, your brother messes up something, uh, I mean, you'll, you'll still love him in the end, you know? Uh, which is kind of interesting, but it, I mean, it's not the same way in in a, a, a business and in a team, you know, it needs to be a win-win. Uh, you bring money in and you make money. Um, so first I want to ask you, do you practice some sport uh, yourself and what analogy can you make between a sports team and an actual SDR team? Yeah. So I played football growing up. I, well, I played a lot of sports growing up, but football was my main sport. I played wide receiver and, um, you know, and so, and I was a huge, huge fan. I'm a big Philadelphia Eagles fan, go birds. Um, but, but, you know, so, and, and, you know, my team will tell you, and I'm sure if they watch this, they'll start laughing, but I love analogies. And, you know, because I love the comparative power and the storytelling power really helps people to understand. And, The, there are so many sports to sales analogies. It, you know, it starts with there being, you know, both individual goals and team goals, even yep. though, you know, you know, our team goal is to win, is to win the game. Right. And even on, and we can even break those goals down to our team goal is to score a touchdown. Right. You know, you know, and when the Super Bowl. exactly. And then we also have individual goals. Me as an individual wide receiver on the team, I want to be the best player I can by running my routes to perfection. I want to catch the ball every time. I want to be the starting wide receiver. I want to, if I'm not the starter, I want to do what I can to catch the coach's attention. Um, there's always individual goals to work for. Then, then it's okay. How, how do you get to that goal? You can strategize, right? If you are You know, you know, you have a game the upcoming week, you can look at film and really say, okay, this cornerback, you know, he flips his hips as soon as the play starts. So I know if I start out going this way and then come back inside, I know I'll have the advantage, right? It's the same exact way as when you look at, at you know, you get a new account assigned to you and you see that they just got a recent round of funding or they have a new CMO or you notice that you and the director of marketing went to the same college, or you notice, you know, whatever you notice, there's various different opportunities that you can take advantage of. But if you don't do that research ahead of time, you're kind of just doing stuff and hoping it works. And right. then after, after you actually put your play into, into motion, right. You know, you practice, you practice the strategy, but then you also practice You know, me as a wide receiver, I practice my route running. I practice catching the ball in the same way in sales. We practice, we practice cold calling. We practice writing elevator pitches. We practice, okay, somebody tells us, Hey, not interested. Thanks. What do we do from here? And how's the, what's the best way to go about that? Mm -hmm. On top of that, there isn't one way, one best way to go about that. I might run my routes a certain way. Somebody else might run them a totally different way. And no one way is the perfect way. It's whatever works for you personally as a player and, and as a yeah. sales. And the team needs to fit in the team. But yeah, like that's, it's very valid um, strategies and tactics out of war by Sun Tzu. I mean, there, there's no greater battlefield in, in modern times than, you know, sports and, and sports game, uh, which makes sports so much interesting. I, I told you I was uh, listening to this series called All or Nothing, which is, so uh educational to to me right now I, i learned tons from these coaches and those teams so th that's super interesting um 
what makes a good SDR? And then I'll ask the same question, but I'll add manager at the end of SDR. Yeah. Um, um, so the, the, the first thing that I think makes a really good SDR and, you know, a really good salesperson and really just a great professional. Cause I really think every job is a sales job. I think, you know, sales has so many life, uh, um, correlations and, um, and, uh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll censor, I'll, I'll censor myself here because, uh, you know, you know, you know, I, I want, want to make sure we're, you know, we're PG here, but basically the, the, the thing that really sets a good SDR out. You don't need to censor, out, by the way, you, you can great. swear all the fucks um, that you want. Then, you know, something I was taught in my first job at single platform, shout out to my first, uh, manager, Joe Brown, um, was if you want to be a good salesperson, you make shit happen. Yep. It, 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 boi it boils down to that. It, it boils down to, okay, yeah, I'm either going to succeed or I'm going to fail and I'm going to choose to succeed. And I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to make it happen somehow. Right. You know, you know, um, you just you, do it. You, you, you just do it. You, you, you figure it, you, you figure out a way to make shit happen. And I think there's a lot of SDRs that kind of, they see a wall come up and they don't see a way around it. And they say, okay, I'm going to try, you know, I'm, I'm going to just let that one be. Maybe I'll go after a different account. Right. But yeah. you've got to figure paralysis out. Paralysis by analysis happens all the time, especially in juniors. Mm -hmm. Big time, big time. So yeah, so that's the first thing, you know, just make shit happen. And then, you know, the other thing that I think really sets SDRs out is who is really hungry to learn and hungry to get better. You know, if, yep. if you're not, if you're not getting better, then everyone else is moving past you. And that's yet, that's yet another parallel to sports, right? If, you know, we're all practicing, you know, we all have our set practice times, but if I really want to be the best and I want to be, and I want to move on, I, you know, I'm going to take an extra hour after practice to run routes and catch passes more. And it's the same thing with sales. You know, yeah. I, you know, I'm going to take an extra hour before work or after work to listen to another demo call, take extra notes. Maybe I'm going to attend a, you know, uh, at Mountain, our performance team does office hours where we can listen in on how they're interacting with clients on like a really advanced technical level. And yeah. that's really complicated for a new SDR to hear, but I encourage them all to go to those uh, office hours because they learn things that they might not need to know on, on a cold call, but that level of learning, that's, that, that, that's what moves you on. It gives you the confidence yeah. to, speak, to speak, you know, to set sales as a language too, you know, gives you the confidence to speak on it. And it gives you the knowledge to really know what you want to do and, and where you want to go next. So that's those so are good. Those are I mean, two there's a reason know. why, why Tom Brady is, you know, like he, he just practices obsessively and he is obsessed about learning and yeah, SDR is, is also like a, a very tough uh, profession. Um, like we said, just, just do it and keep on going. I think that the keep on going part is, is very tough so, for a bunch of people, the grit, the resilience. Um, yet I think, you know, that it's, you know, ironically, I think it's one of the profession that will stay the longest and that, that will be one of the last to be replaced by AI because it's a lot of soft skills. Yeah. Yet in or actual time it's one of the hardest professions to keep a bunch of people give up you know they burn out why do you think that is and do you think there's a solution to that problem yeah so i think people burn out for a, for for a number of reasons one you know just like with sports sales isn't for everybody i mean if sales was for everybody everybody would do it uh mm -hmm. you know it's you know it's you know it's high pressure um, you know, you have, you have metrics to hit You're it's everyone's fully accountable. So if you're doing something really well, or if you're doing something really bad, everybody knows about it. Um, so it's, it's really hard. And I think that's, that's one of the reasons that, you know, the constant rejection, the, you know, the groundhog day, day in, day out, you know, I think gets really tough for people. And, and yeah. I think what, you know, that's one of the reasons I think people, people struggle to, to stick with it is, mm -hmm. It's easy to, 
it's easy when you're just starting and you're excited and you got all the new company swag and you, mm-hmm. you know, you are really fired up about the product, but you know, seven, eight, nine months into the job, when you are kind of starting to hit, you know, you know, to hit, hit a plateau, what do you do? And some, you know, some SDRs have the creativity and the, the grit and the resilience to say, okay, here's how, you know, I'm going to make shit happen or I'm not. And, uh, and, you know, that's the, you know, I, another quote that I love that I think is also on my LinkedIn is, you know, you know, people say failure isn't an option and that's, that, that's kind of dumb to think failure is always an option. It's the easiest option to choose. Uh, so, but you can choose to fail or you can choose to succeed. And I think once, once people hit that plateau, that, 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 that failure option becomes really easy. Um, yeah. but if you can push past and shake up your process and, you know, and continue to be resilient, it pays off because undoubtedly any sale, any sales leader will tell you that internal promotions from SDR to anywhere else in the organization are your best promotions. Correct. I think also, you know, from a, a market standpoint, SDRs are not the, the best paid professions when someone uh, gets their diplomas, but I mean, they kind of made the choice. You know, I was studying business back in the days and for people that don't graduate on of top schools, for example, um, and don't have top grades, basically like if you have a, a you know, business administration um, diploma then you get into sales and then you find out that it is really damn hard you know sales is is really damn hard compared to i don't know if i um studied uh you know at at, at harvard and got off a a, a great job at at gp morgan i think they have great onboarding process you're not left alone you know in the dark with a phone and a bunch of contact lists so i think from a market standpoint that explains because the quality of candidates is is kind of low as per se. It's not these kind of resilient people that studied, studied, studied and got top grades. So they're kind of learning it on, on the rough. Um, but, um, you know, once you learn those skills and once you become good at sales, I think these skills can unlock greatness. I mean, there's a bunch of people, uh, a bunch of billionaires that started their careers and sell probably like a good 25%, you know, are great salesmen. And I, I think this, this is one of the top skills to, to unlock. Um, coming back to, to what you were saying about failure, uh, because we've got a couple minutes left and I still want to ask you what, what, what's a great SDR manager like. Um, when, is there a good time to quit? Can you quit smart? For example, there's the book, uh, The Dip by Seth Godin. Um, and he mentioned that, you know, there's, there's smart quitting. I, I'm not about quitting, you know, like uh, I'm, I'm more of the philosophy of, of never quit and kind of burn your boat. Yet I'm also of the philosophy to kind of have a BCDFG plan, but a smart people, a smart person always have those BCDEFG. He doesn't even need to plan them. If he fails, he can plan. I, I can pivot like in a second. If my business would burn down right now, I could find something new, like almost instantly um, because I'm a great sales guy and I have these skills, you know, like I told you, but um, do you think there's a right time to quit? Get, for example, if an SDR is calling a bunch of uh, leads in a list and he sees that they're not responding, can he just quit on that and ask for a new list? Yeah. I mean, that, again, it's a really tough question because <laughs> because I'm in that same boat as you. I don't love, you know, you know, just just the word quit. You know, has that such bad negative connotation to it. Mm-hmm. I think um, I think um, the, that being said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting yeah. a different result. So I think um, I think you really have to give a company a process, a cadence, an email template an account, you really, really have to give it your really 100% honest try. And if, okay. if at the end of the day, you feel like you have given it your 100% honest try and you've, and not just one try, but several tries, you've iterated, mm-hmm. you've tried something different, you've tried multiple different things and it's just not happening. Then ultimately 
you do have to realize that maybe there is something else. Um, sure. You know, for, um, you know, yet another analogy that I, that, that I love is, you know, um, just because you aren't successful as a salesperson at one organization doesn't mean you're not a good salesperson. Um, yeah. You know, you could be the world's greatest trumpet player, but if you are in Metallica, you're not going to shine. <laughs> or if your trumpet is bad, if your product sucks in, in an organization, for example, hard yeah. to sell. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you know, you know, it's all about that individual person. If you feel yeah. like, you, you know, you have to feel like you've given it your hundred percent effort. And then if you feel like if you get, you've given it your hundred percent, your hundred percent effort and really, really done that, then, then yeah, you know, find something yeah. new. You know, it's you like know. If, if Tom Brady has shitty receivers, I mean, he, he certainly won't, won't be uh, happy about staying in the, in the team, right? Yeah, but the, but, the, but the first thing that Tom Brady would do would, um, okay, well, maybe we can run the ball more. I can throw the ball to my running backs and Correct. tight ends. Correct. I can talk to my coach and maybe we can bring in from receivers from other teams. And exactly, you know, if you're – you, you, you've, you've got to really give it an, on, an honest chance. If you're just, if you're, if you're quitting and leaving at the first sign of struggle, you're. I think the best sport athletes, they're also much into coaching. They are great leaders. They lead by their actions and yeah. then they can coach their, their younger guys and tell them and, and help them accommodate. Um, in, in 60 seconds, Lee, what makes a great SDR manager? Yeah. Uh, somebody who, somebody who leads from the front. Somebody who um, I who I'm not going to do, you know, you know, I'm going to tell you something because I truly believe because I believe in it and I believe it's good yeah. for you and I'm, okay. I, and I'm and I'm here to support you and okay. and truly being like you m- making everybody feel like you have you have their back and then actually having their back. Right. right. Helping people out with, hey, how do I respond to this email? Oh, I came across this account. I know you've been doing really well with business to business companies. I'm going to send this your way. Hey, I have a, I have a LinkedIn connection here. I see you're going after this account. I want to help you out. Every, sure. everything that I do is how can I make my team better? How can I make them better salespeople? How can I make them better people? How can I make them better professionals every single day? If I can get you out of the SDR role and into your next role, that's how I know I've done a good job. That's great. Servant leader philosophy, right? So that, that's one of the best yeah. philosophies out there. It means you're just a nice guy. And if you help me, I'm, I'm going to help you. I mean, it's, it's such like basic human psychology, yet I don't think enough leaders use uh, that, that philosophy. So Lee, thank, thanks for being here. I mean, it's, it's been yeah. 30 minutes and I think we dropped like many value bombs for uh, SDRs and SDR managers. Uh, thank you for your time, buddy. And uh, I'll keep you posted about uh, the, the recording of this podcast. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting me and having me on. This was a blast. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll, uh, and let's, let's definitely stay in touch. All right, man. Keep on making those touchdowns. Let's go make shit happen. Yeah.